Enraged, bellows at the boy, then a sharp slap in the face. This deliberate, calculated harshness is part of an extraordinary new treatment for mentally crippled children. At the University of California in Los Angeles, a team of researchers is applying a precept to extreme cases. They have taken on three boys and a girl with a special form of schizophrenia called autism. I'm an autistic teenager who has been forced into attending court-ordered applied behaviour analysis therapy, or ABA. These are the experiences that led me to run into traffic to get away from it. From what I've experienced with behaviour therapy, I feel like the RBT therapists who want to help me actually belittle me, make me feel incapable of doing what I can do and constantly push me to do tasks as simple as flashcards. I even collect data on how many times I apologise. I feel like a lab rat in a maze, and the cheese at the end is when I get to go home. I don't know what I'm doing there. I've asked them, what were my goals? And they said, they always change until I'm 18. This was devastating because I thought if I played along and tried, I would graduate out of ABA. I think throughout history, there have been dominant ways of thinking about things or doing things in societies, including in science. And I believe that ABA is a dinosaur. When you, when you get diagnosed as um, like an adult, the first thing that my like um, the person who diagnosed me was like go and read like stories of other autistic people and there's no cure or anything you need to do obviously you just need to learn how to to live and do that you talk to other autistic people. ABA was actually the precursor to what later became gay conversion therapy and so it all has the same root this awful evil man behaviorist, I believe named Ivor Lovas, who believed that autistic people were not human. Just to connect us to struggles to end uh, trans conversion therapies, um, which I was, it's a, a struggle that I was very involved in uh, here in Ontario, which is a province in Canada that I live in, um, and was involved in the, the sort of legislative process to have that banned. And I have sort of written about that in connection um, to ABA and to uh, to you know my hope that we that we see a ban on ABA um, in our lifetime we're farther behind here in Canada so I'm saying in our lifetime um, identity foreclosure occurs when somebody else has determined your identity for you and um, in any type of conversion therapy that is the goal is to turn somebody else into the version they want. Um, and we also know that, you know, so we're talking about this from a pediatric standpoint of identity development, but if you look at the lived experiences of autistic adults who have gone through some type of, whether it was conversion um, therapy itself, um, those of us like myself who grew up queer in a religious environment, um, people who grew up in very fundamentalist or very strict families, we know what that's like to have those uh, demands placed on us so that we cannot show our authentic self. Um, and it, we know from the literature and from the experience of autistic adults that what ends up happening is a lot of mental unwellness, not because we're autistic, um, but because of the disconnect and the dysregulation of living in society that doesn't want us. People have the right to support. This is important from various different angles. It's important because um, it's about not changing me, but giving me what I need. So under this 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 accessibility clause, which is a long one, it gives a lot of examples. Like, for example, if deaf people 
deaf adults say that when I was a child, I was denied, even though I was deaf from birth, I was denied the right to sign language and they tried to force me to speak and force me to lip read and everything. And we understand that the dif difference is, there's a difference when people became uh, deaf later in life because sometimes they actually do prefer those mechanisms. But for people who are deaf from birth, it's different. Um, so it it is unfair to think that you're benevolently helping these children by forcing them to speak. You should be giving them something which allows them access to communication, which is the sign language of the country. Otherwise, you're denying their rights. So that's how accessibility is different from what ABA tries to do. ABA tries to change the person to fit in with society. So many things that I want to echo and also support, right? like the self-determination and you know, centering the protest. How else do you teach self-advocacy or how would you claim to teach self-advocacy and then not encourage the protest, not encourage no, not encourage this is where I'm uncomfortable, right? Because it's not about our kids fitting in, right? It's about us fitting in around them, right? I don't want these like shaved off people trying to fit into my classroom. That's not my classroom. It basically teaches you that you should live for other people. That is the, the biggest danger for it is that you don't matter. And like most of us who found out and later in life that we were autistic, you basically have a crisis of conscience. I mean, sorry, a crisis of identity because you're like, wait, who am I? Like, I've been living for everyone else for so long. Like, and then you realize that this is what's happened. And yeah, I mean, it's it's heartbreaking hearing like women in their 60s going, I, I don't know if I'll actually ever know who I am. And, and it's because they've been robbed of their agency. So uh, I think it's just, it's, it, it, it is an, an completely inhumane, no matter how positive it looks from the outside.